ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕਾ ਖਾਲਸਾ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕੀ ਫਤਿਹ sky 774 politics punjab your show your voice and your host palko in britain energy prices gone so higher inflation rate is so higher and the yesterday's news the interest rate of the bank of england has gone really higher too the bank of england has raised the base of the interest rate from 2% to 3% each and every one going to be affect from it what could be the impact on our society today's show i'm going to bring my special guest mortgage advisor principal of the company black swan mr kenneth millen kenneth millen he is giving his services to the community from long time he is with us in the studio kenneth you're welcome in my show thank you so much for taking a part in my show Thank you, Bob. Uh, I really appreciate you inviting me on, and I hope I can help you. Oh, thank you. And Ken, you, uh, tell me that you know the Bank of England has raised the interest rate. What is your first reaction on it? What is your reaction on it? Well, it's been expected for some time for the base rate to go up, Bob. Uh, the base rate rise yesterday at 12 o'clock from 2.25 percent up to 3 percent. That's uh, right. It was needed. Uh, it had to happen and the whole objective of the Bank of England is to keep inflation down. Uh, I mean, the inflation right now is currently running above, above 10% and the target for the country is to have it at 2%, five times the inflation. And what does that mean to us as a country? That means that uh, pro products are increasing up faster than what uh, salaries are coming in so your income can't pay for the products that you want and we have a runaway effect with inflation uh, running away with itself uh, to the point where uh, we have constant demands for wage increases uh, businesses can't set prices for products and households can't set the budget uh, for the incomes coming in so the Bank of England has no choice but to up the base rate to slow down the inflation. Okay, <clears throat> uh, as you're saying, the Bank of England tried to control the inflation, so that's the reason they, yep. has, they has raised the interest rate of the base rate. Uh, same here, questions from so many viewers and from myself, why are the mortgage rate is so high because of that? Right, okay then, so the base, the base rate set by the Bank of England is uh, connected directly to your mortgage rate. Because what happens is the Bank of England sets the base rate, the central banks lend money to your bank, yep. i.e. if you were Santander or one of the other high street lenders or one of the lenders that are out there, they get the money from central bank. They set their, they get the money at the base rate, yep. and then they sell that to you at their, at their standard variable rate. So that's how they make the profit. So if the base rate goes up, they have now got to put hmm. your money up so they continue to stay in business. And you, if you've got a, a fixed mortgage, that's fabulous. It's not going to affect you in any way, shape or form. That's the reason you took a fixed mortgage. If you've got a five year fix, you're going to be okay for the five years. But if you're coming off that mortgage, that could be a challenge for you. Or if you're on a standard variable rate, again, that's going to be a challenge for you. If you if you're on a tracking mortgage, you will fa you will find that affecting your mortgage straight away. And a standard, a standard variable rate, if it's gone from, uh, we were we were selling fixed rates at the beginning of the year under two percent for five year fix. Those same mortgages will be up at seven percent now. So it's, it can be quite scary for some people out there. Hmm. Okay, you, uh, you said standard, uh, standard rate mortgage and tracking mortgage yep. and variable uh, fixed, mo fixed rate mortgage. Yep. Can you tell my viewer what is, all, uh, what is the difference in between? Right, so 75% of people in the country right now are on 
a fixed rate mortgage. That's the most popular mortgages out there. So, when, you, mortgage, so yeah. when your mortgage comes to an end, you go on a fixed rate. And what that means is you can plan your budget for the next five years as, as far as your mortgage is concerned. You know what you're going to be paying for five years. If you're on a standard variable rate, you may have taken a chance because the rates are going down and they're very low. And you can get a cheaper rate mortgage if you've got a standard variable rate. Uh, unfortunately, a standard variable rate, you're at the mercy of the banks because when the base rate goes up, yeah. the banks will put their standard variable rate up and it doesn't necessarily go up by the same amount as, as, as the base rate, but that's up to you, your particular lender. As far as a tracking mortgage is, is concerned, that will go up as the base rate goes up and uh, that will happen immediately. As, as soon as the base rate goes up, your, your, your tracker mortgage will go up. So if you're on a tracker or if you're on a standard variable, it's up to you to make a decision, well, hang on, can I afford the changes if it changes for the worst in the future? If you can't, you need to get on a fixed rate and take the hit. Because next year, I hate to say this, the base rate's gonna go up to about 5%. Uh, it was gonna go up to 7.5% when we had uh, Liz Truss in charge of the economy. Uh, but now they've got rid of Liz, and hopefully we've got some sensible people in charge with credibility in the market. Uh, the rate isn't going to go up. Unfortunately, I believe that we're in a, in a depression right now, and it looks like it's going to stay like that for the next 12 months, maybe even two years, where, where we'll walk away out of it. And it's going to be tightening our belts for everybody, I believe. Uh, how the, uh, yeah, you dis, uh, you're talking about the base rate, and uh, I would like to ask, how does the Bank of England's base rate impact the mortgages? Well, the, the, they are fixed to the mortgages. Yes. So the, the Bank of England's base rate, if that goes up, the lender will have to put their rate up to match the, the Bank of England's base rate. Does that make sense? Yes. Yep. That's I want to clear for my viewers. Yeah. Okay. Are there in future, or you thinking uh, the morg uh, the mortgage rate going to decrease or? Well, it has decreased. It decreased just recently. Yeah. And the reason for that is because there was a bit of uh, confidence in the market, so it went up and it peaked and it took a little dip. But the days of having, if you're on a two percent fixed rate and it's coming to an end, you're going to find a pinch because your, your particular mortgage is going to go up. That's why you need to talk to an independent financial advisor, because they'll be able to look at the whole market and get the best rate. They won't be able to save you money to what you, you spend right now, but it'll save you money, because it's dead easy just to stay with the same rate or the same lender, but you need to look at the whole market to get the best rate on the market. Will you be able to get back to 2%, 1.5%? I think those days are over. I think the days of one and a half percent, they're gone for the foreseeable future, and I'm talking the next three, four, five years. <laughs> yeah, it's like a very scary actually for the people. We we don't know, and we can't uh, <coughs> uh, uh, we can't paint a picture of what can be the picture for society. That is like inflation rate is already higher. People they're struggling to. Uh, bring the bread on the table for their yep. family and the other side interest rate is going really higher too mm -hmm. and it's how the people will survive is it is a big question for coming future so the thing is Bal, the first thing is don't panic if you have got uh if you're in a fixed rate you need to be thinking about talking to your mortgage broker at least seven months before the fixed rate is up then you can start looking at where you are. I mean, if you're, if you're right on the edge of finances and you're paying that mortgage and you think, how am I going to find another 300 pound a month along with everything else that's going up? That's the challenge this country has got right now. There's people who are going to really, really struggle, but we can start looking ahead, plan for it. Make sure, make sure we've got everything in place. The thing is, there's many things you can do as a mortgage broker you could put on uh, a longer term. So if you're on a 25 years term, let's add another five years term to it. We can reduce that later on when the interest rates come down. Hmm. Uh, we could do an interest only, partial interest only, partial, partial repayment. Not ideal, 
But if it means you can keep a roof over your head, it may be something you'll have to do. Hmm. There's going to be some hard choices, uh, but if you plan ahead, you, you'll be okay. So talk to a mortgage broker, talk to your, your current lender. What not to do is don't bury your head in the sand. Make sure you, uh, you're talking to someone, especially if you're worried. It's not the end of the world. Yeah. Is now is a good time to buy a new property? Well, uh, with every uh, with every problem, there becomes an opportunity, doesn't it? Yeah. So the whole thing yeah, it's good is good news for some people. Yeah, it's good news for some people. You've got money in the bank, and you're thinking about uh, getting your portfolio built up. There's going to be some bargains around. Hmm. If you if, if you you're a first time buyer and you already got your dogs, the thing that may put you off that is the high interest rates, but if you're able to get a bargain, it may be worth paying the, the higher interest rates. So think about it. There's a lot of people out there afraid to, to buy a house because of these high interest rates. So the housing market comes to a slow point. All of a sudden, there isn't 10 people lining up around the corner to buy that house. Two months ago, we had customers coming to us saying, I'm sorry, Ken, I lost the house because someone offered more. I would not be offered more than what the asking price is today. I'd be going in and, and offering less. And you can push a bargain now. So this is the time for bargain hunters, I would imagine. Try to push for the less. Yeah, yeah, of course. Okay, what about the stamp duty? Is that in fact a... Well, the stamp duty uh, in September was one of the things that quasi quitting uh, changed. And it was one of the better things they did. You got rid of the stamp duty for first-time buyers to keep the market going and keep the house prices going up. Uh, so if you're a first-time buyer, the good news is you won't have to pay uh, stamp duty up to the property prices of £425,000. If you're moving on to a second home, you won't have to pay any stamp duty up to £225,000. So the good news is that's the one thing that didn't change. So the people can have a bit relief from the stamp stamp duty. About first time buyers, stamp duty, yeah. first time buyer, from, uh, like a, they can save their <coughs> stamp duty up to five hundred fifty k. Sorry, four hundred fifty k. Four hundred twenty-five thousand. Oh, four hundred twenty-five thousand. Four hundred twenty-five thousand. And yeah. uh, for the additional or second house or. If you have a, a second house, unfortunately, you've got an additional 3% to add on there. So if you're a buy-to-let landlord and you're getting a second property, remember, you've got an additional 3%. So even if it's under £225,000, yeah. uh, which a, a first-time buyer wouldn't pay anything for, if you, you're buying it, you wouldn't pay anything for the stamp duty. But if you were a buy-to-let landlord, you'd pay 3% on £225,000. Hmm. Okay, Ken. Let's say if uh, if my mortgage uh, if my mortgage um, deal coming to an end shortly, yep. what uh, action I should take for that? What sh what's the best I can do? Actions you should take, yeah. right? So your your mortgage deals come to an end shortly. I would say you should start looking at it right now. I'm talking within seven months of your mortgage deal coming to an end. Uh, because a mortgage broker can fix that deal and hold it for six months. So if the rates go up, and we expect them to go up uh, to five, they're at three percent right now. The base rate it's, a, it's about to go up to five percent next year, maybe even higher. Yeah. So that means your mortgage rates are going to go up. But if you fix it now, that means you can hold that rate for six months until you change the, the mortgage the mortgage over. So if you have got a mortgage. Uh, and you've never used a mortgage broker before, this is the time to start using mortgage brokers. Make sure he's independent, make sure he's whole of market, and make sure he's got a good name for himself. Make sure it's someone that's been personally recommended to you by Bao, me, <laughs> <laughs> or, or, or someone out there. Yep. Oh, thank you. Um, yeah, so people are going to fix their mortgage, yep. if, uh, as uh, you're saying. The and if the rates come down, you can change the mortgage in them six months. Okay, how long time, uh, can you explain a bit more, uh, like, uh, how long time people can fix it, how, uh, how long time terms people have options right. to fix? Okay, so you, you can fix a mortgage today for 30 years, yeah, 
Now, 30 years in my mind is far too long because that would stop you from moving house, it'd stop you from getting married. If you, but if you knew you were going to stay there, you, you got your ideal property and I'm never going to move from this property ever. Yeah. 30 years to me is far too long. Uh, but 10 years, still, I think that's too long. Five years, I think, is a reasonable time to fix your mortgage. Two years comes and goes quickly. Remember, whenever you fix a mortgage, there will be an early repayment charge if you break that, if you break that mortgage before the end of the fixed period. So this is something you've got to weigh on. We used to always say, if you're a first-time buyer, fix it for two years. We were saying that right up until we saw the, the rates going up at the beginning of the year. Mm. Uh, then we started fixing them for five years. Uh, but more than five years, unless you're definitely certain you're going to be in that property for the rest of your life, I, 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 I probably wouldn't. But it's, it's each individual's choice, and that's down to your risk aversion. So, best option for people, you're the wise and lucky. Five no. year, I, I would suggest a five year, but it's uh, down to individuals. I mean, I, I meet people who say, this is the property that I've always wanted and I will never move from that. If I was them, I'd fix for the rest of my life. But saying that, where we are with the rates is another thing. I mean, if we were up at, if we were up at six, seven percent right now for the rates, that could come down in two years. Hmm. And if you fix that for 10 years, you're paying that for 10 years. Whereas, let's face it, if the rates come down in the next three, two, three years, yeah, yeah. Um. As I mentioned, like uh, if someone's mortgage is uh, shortly, like a, near, a fixed rate nearly to end, yeah? And at the same time, uh, the interest rate is a high in the market yeah. now. The Bank of England saying they uh, they want to control higher. the in inflation rate, yeah? yeah? Uh, the person who fixed the mortgage in, uh, mortgage in these days, yeah. and uh, thus uh, can be fixed for two year, five year. Yeah. They're fixing that rate today. What is the rate today or tomorrow or yeah. coming month? Can it definitely uh, that's possibility a, that's to something, hire. Bao, that's something you've got and to weigh on. And if, <coughs> if the, as Bing, Bank of England saying, they try to control the inflation mm -hmm. rate, they control it and mm -hmm. interest rate goes down, it's, People can lose it then. For, you're right. Yeah, yeah you're right. people can lose it. What should people do? Stick with the variable rate or tracking rate or what wow, should people? Wow, do? this is the thing, isn't it? This is the huge thing. I mean, right now, let's let's see. What the Bank of England are trying to do is they're trying to control inflation, but there's a lot of things happening outside of the control, i.e., lockdown, COVID lockdown. That's outside of the Bank of England's control. Uh, fuel prices outside the Bank of England's control. Food prices outside the Bank of England's control. The war in Ukraine. There's a lot of things that, that are happen external to the Bank of England. So you're quite right. If I fix it for five years and the rates come down, I could lose out. Right. So, so it is a chance. It always has been, by the way. No one knows where we're going to be in two, three, four, five years' time. But think of this. If you cannot manage for that that rate to go up by 3%, and that will mean you lose your house, you can't afford not to fix it for five years. Yeah. Mm. So if you can manage and you think, well, hang on, I'm willing to take a chance, I'm willing to take the risk that it's going to come down, go on a variable. It will be cheaper for you in the short term. But what we've got to think is, in the worst possible scenario, will I be able to keep my house and a roof over my head? And if you can, in the worst possible scenario, remember, and, and uh, 1980, in the 1980s, it went up to 17%. That's what mortgages were, 17%. I remember that. It was, everybody was selling the house. No yeah, one that's was, what I was going to say. This is in, uh, in from the last three decades. This is yeah, the biggest right. increase, actually. The biggest increase in the last three decades. You're absolutely right. Mm -hmm. yeah? So the, the challenge here is, is it going to keep going? Y yes, well, most people are saying it's going to keep going. Next year, they reckon it's going to go up to 5%. So we know in the short term, your interest rates are going to go up. What we need to be thinking is, what's right for me individually? And again, this is why you need to talk to a mortgage broker. Yeah. Um, Ken, uh, just want to know actually, you know, the recessions uh, was a, like a UK had a recessions before and yeah. uh, had a experience before. Like if the interest rate has gone higher in that the sense of the today is a, it was a, uh, like had a experience gone down or decrease or is it stayed always a. Well, recession recession is normally caused by inflation. Yeah. Yeah. 
So the whole thing is, is that's why the government is so want to up in the base rate, because that's the biggest tool to get the inflation down. So, I mean, the whole thing is, what you're saying to me, is in recessions before, has the interest rates ever gone is down? Is that we'll go back no. to 1.7? <laughs> no, <laughs> I don't think so, yeah. I could be wrong, but I don't think so. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it is. A, it's very hard for the people. Like uh, we're saying, uh, obesity, uh, uh, obesity in UK is the highest like a rate in UK too, if we can the, say. The, the, the and today, if <coughs> the people, they are struggling for bringing in the normal food from the shops. So how they can manage it, the thing how, is about, how is they it? can make a management plan for their health, it's, can, it's a big impact on their... Wow. It's a challenge. It's a huge challenge. Let's look at this, right? House prices are massively overpriced right now. And everybody's been saying it. I mean, we've got, we've got young people who can't go into the housing market. You know, mm -hmm. people in the 30s living with their mums and dads and can't get out of the house. And they work in jobs, you know, and they save and they don't spend and they don't waste their money. And the parents say to them, well, I saved up for my... But what the parents don't understand is house prices today, relevant to salary, is eight, well, when you, you bought a house, when I bought my house, it was three times your gross taxable salary. These days, it's eight, ten times your gross taxable salary. The young people today are not getting the same chances as what we got. And the house prices, it's, it's simply ridiculous how prices are, house prices have been allowed to, to shoot up the way they've shot up. Uh, it needs, it needs, it needs, to adjust, and this will be an automatic way of it adjusting. As the interest rates go up, the house prices will come down. And thank goodness, because it will let our young people get back into housing. Yeah, people need anyway. People need to borrow the money. Like uh, in today's situation, in this situation, what what would you say about that? Uh, how much a person? Uh, how much should a person borrow? Yeah, well. Uh, when you talk to a mortgage broker, they will go th through affordability, yeah? Okay. And it's, uh, uh, but the affordability is changing. You know, it's changing on a daily basis right now. So the thing is, what, ha what was affordable to you six months ago may not be affordable to you now, yeah? Mm. So uh, what should they borrow? Well, you shouldn't push yourself to the limit. We had people coming into our, our offices a year ago saying, how much can I borrow? No, no, you must understand, I want to get a house worth £350,000 and if I put this in and that in, and really stretching themselves, to them, they're the people who are going to really suffer with this, this uh, increase. You should never push yourself to the edge. It should always be a comfortable payment for you. Uh, and unfortunately, it's going to be tough for most people out there. Hmm. How much, how much a person can borrow, actually, uh, according to the ways? Right. So a, per a person can, rule of thumb, is four and a half times your gross taxable salary. Yeah. yeah? That's rule of thumb. So if you have £40,000, that means four and a half times would be £18,000. Did that in my head, Bob? Will you please do that? Yeah. <laughs> £18,000. If I'm wrong, please write into Bob. Yeah. So £18,000. Uh, so, £180,000, yeah? Hmm. Four and a half times your gross taxable salary. Now, if you have a car, which is a liability to you, and hmm. you're paying out £1,000 a month, that means £12,000 a year you're paying out in the car. Hmm. So if you have £40,000, you need to take the £12,000 off the £40,000, which means it's now... Uh, £28,000, yeah, hmm. £28,000, and you multiply that by four and a half, and that's how much you'll be able to borrow, uh, reasonably. Is it easier to <coughs> buy a lot, uh, buy to let property or easier to residential property? Buy a lot of residential, it depends on your personal circumstances. Hmm. As a buy, the thing about residential is it's all about income, how much you have coming in, so, so you can afford the property, so you're doing affordability cal affordability calculation to buy the residential. Buy to let, it's all about deposit. You need a minimum of 25% to buy a, a, a buy to let. And then it's all about income to rent ratio, yeah? 
Uh, so uh, wh whatever your mortgage is going to be, your rent's going to be something like 1.75 above, ab above uh, whatever you're paying in mortgage payments, interest-only mortgage payments. Yeah. So that is another <coughs> one question for you. Uh, if I have come into like a, uh, some money, yeah. And uh, should I win the lottery or uh, or, <laughs> or <Yeah>. what? <laughs> Horses. Yeah, right. Okay. Oh, very yeah. rich. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Rich yeah. man. Yeah, right. Yeah. Okay. I pay off. Uh, should I uh, pay off? Uh, uh, pay my mortgage off? So or what you saying to me? Like it can. So what you saying to me? You have a mortgage, and maybe you've had some inheritance. What should you do with the money? Because you've always wanted to be mortgage free. Now, my thoughts on this, and this is my thoughts, right? Yeah. This isn't advice, it's my thoughts, right? Mm. So say, for example, you have a mortgage of £100,000, yeah. and you've just been left £100,000, luckily. The numbers all work out. That's great, yeah. So some people may say, well, I want to be mortgage-free. I'll just pay the mortgage off, right? But you've got a fixed rate, and your fixed rate is 1.19%, and that's going on, and you've got that for another four years. I would suggest... You put your hundred thousand pound into the bank, and right now in the Barclays uh, rainy day fund, you get five point one percent on that hundred thousand pound. So I'd put hundred thousand pounds into the bank. I keep paying your mortgage, which you're paying at a rate of one point one nine percent, until the point that you need to change your mortgage, and then you ch then you pay your mortgage off at that point. At least then you earn some money on the interest rates because. It may, be, it may be bad for borrowers right now, but for savers, it's a great time to have That's money in the bank. That's what I was going bank. to ask you. Like, it's going to be good for the savers, actually. Yeah, because one person's negative, is another person's positive. Yeah, but savers are less than that. So savers, I mean, it's a great time to have some money, and, and you should be looking around for your best savings accounts. Hmm. Okay, Ken. Like, a... What the 10 good thing would you suggest me today here to my viewers, to me and my viewers, to everybody actually, uh, uh, doing before, if I got in my new house, what the 10, th 10 things I should consider actually? Right, so what you're saying to me is, uh, if you're just about to get mortgage, yeah, yeah, and what, what should you be thinking about before you get the mortgage? Yeah. Right, okay then, I knew you were going to ask me that. Right. <laughs> so I wrote some things down, right? So what you, what you don't mind, right? Yeah. So the first thing is, if you're going for a mortgage, yeah. now that doesn't just mean that you're, you're a first-time buyer. It could mean that uh, you're about to remortgage, yeah. or you're about to increase your mortgage because you're, you're going you're going up, up the mortgage up the property ladder. Mm -hmm. But it all works out the same. You could be a buy to let landlord. It all works out the same. You've got to be thinking well ahead before you go for a mortgage. It's no good just turning up on a day, I want a mortgage, and that happens a lot, by the way, and I send them away, go and do these things, <laughs> and they come back to me six months later when they're all sorted out. So the first thing I would say is credit score. Your credit score, is it counts. It's just that simple where it counts. If you've got a poor credit score, you ain't getting a mortgage, or you're going to get one at a ridiculously poor rate. Yeah. So... What do I mean by credit score? Well, it's not really the credit number that you see, it's the credit report. They're looking for defaults, they're looking for how much you've got, how much you've borrowed, uh, county court judgments, bankruptcies, that sort of thing. Now that doesn't mean you can't get a mortgage, but it means you will have to go to a mortgage. A lot of people that come to us is someone who's been to the bank and the bank's told them, no, you can't get a mortgage. And they come to us and we're able to get them a mortgage. Yeah, it may not be as good a rate as what the, they could have got at the bank, but that's the problem with having a credit problem. Yeah, so uh, the first thing is, is check your credit file. Have a look at the credit report. Now, I would suggest Credit Karma. It doesn't cost anything, 30 days free trial. Yeah. Or Check My File is my favourite. Check My File, you go on to it, 30 days free, and it, it tells you Experian and all the other... Uh, other, other ones that the banks use to check your credit fill. And you'll be able to see this if you've got any problems. There may be a problem there that you don't even know about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's worth doing that, yeah? Second thing I would say is the starting point to get a mortgage is your own sums. So go, on to, go online, check out your affordability. There's lots of affordability calculators online. 
Yeah, anyone in the banks will have an affordability calculator. Put all your numbers in. Don't cheat. Put the right numbers in, or it doesn't mean anything. Yeah. <laughs> so put your numbers in. Uh, make sure you have a deposit sorted out. Make sure you, you've got the right deposit sorted out. Make sure you've taken into account all the money you need before you get the mortgage, i.e. stamp duty, uh, what else? Uh, stamp duty, solicitor's fees, broker's fees, uh, any fees that the bank take. Yeah. Don't be fooled by, uh, come back to that say, a second. Uh, so, if you're just about to change mortgages or you're just about to get a mortgage, don't go changing your job five minutes before you get your new mortgage. All lenders look at your income. And to look at their income, they want to know that you've been in work for at least three months. Six months is better, yeah? Best six months. Don't, don't do five years in one job and then come for a mortgage one month into your next job. <laughs> Hang on before you change jobs when you go for your new mortgage. Yeah? Because they're going to want to have a look at you uh, uh, that you've been in the same job for at least six months. Uh, the more you save, the better it will be. Yeah? So make sure you, you've got a deposit. Uh, they will look at your bank statements. They like to see savers, so it's worth putting £10 a month away every month. Yeah. It proves that you're a saver rather than someone who's living beyond the means. You will never get a mortgage if you're living beyond your means. The bank doesn't want to have to sell your house from under you. Yeah. Uh, debts don't help. Yeah. So I would say number four is debts. Keep an eye on your debt. If you've got a lot of debt, car, uh, credit cards, doesn't mean you won't get a mortgage but they don't help. Uh, try not to have any debt when you go for your mortgage. Uh, if you've got a car, make sure it's, don't go and get yourself a brand new BMW on credit to look like you're, you're, you're very rich. As you're saying, check your affordability, you can afford it or not, yeah. Exactly. exactly. But debts don't count, so make sure you can get rid of the debts if you possibly can. You need proof of income. So if you're self-employed, yeah, it's no good having a hundred thousand pound coming into your bank account if it's all cash in hand. You need to be as taxable income, what you've paid tax on. So if you're self-employed, they will ask for your SA, it used to be called SO302s, it's now called uh, tax computations and tax year overviews. So mm -hmm. that will show what you paid on tax. Now, if you have a hundred thousand pound coming into your bank account, that's your turnover. That doesn't mean that you've earned a hundred thousand pounds. Uh, it's what your net profit is if you're a sole trader, yeah? what you've actually paid yourself as a sole trader. Now, you may have paid yourself a whole load of money, cash in hand. You can't count that money, I'm afraid. Okay? So, uh, the bigger the deposit, the better. So, just to explain this to you, uh, in the good old days, we could get 100% loan to value. That means if you bought a house for £100,000, uh, you didn't need to borrow any money. You didn't need to have any deposit. You just borrowed £100,000, buy the house for £100,000. They were the good old days. And then we had 2008 when everybody lost their houses. Yeah? Mm. So the banks have said we're not going to do that anymore. The best we'll give them is 95% loan to value. That meant if you're buying a house for £100,000, you had to find £5,000 to put down on the house. That's called a 95% loan to value. Uh, when COVID came along, they changed that to 90% loan to value. So right now we're standing at the best you're going to get. There is some 95% loan to values out there. I would not recommend them in this climate. 90% is a much better, better way. You tend to get a better deal with a 90% loan to value. Uh, that means you've got to put £10,000 down. But the bigger the deposit, the better rate you will get because it's less risk the bank takes. So get a deposit in place, and that just means saving. Save as much as you can. If this isn't the right time for you to buy, and it's going to be next year or the year after, have it in mind. When you're saving, make the best out of your savings. Uh, we used to have what's called a help to buy ISA. Now that's gone. That went two, three years ago. The best thing, if you're definitely going to go for a mortgage, a lifetime ISA is the best way. That means you put the money in, 
and the government gives you 25% of what you put in. Now, that's a no-brainer. You know, you can get up to £4,000 off the government. And it's all, it's all, uh, but you've got to use it for either buying a house or for retirement. So you can't go put it in and then take it out because there will be penalties if you take it out. So if you are buying for a house and you're planning ahead, lifetime asset, if you haven't got one, go and get one set up with your, your local bank. Have a look around. Uh, there's lots of, there's lots of uh, compare the market things out there, but go for the best time, life, lifetime ISA, and make sure you put money in there every month. Because um, the bigger the deposit, the better. Uh, if you're struggling to meet affordability, don't be afraid to buy it with someone. You know, uh, girlfriend, wife, boyfriend, uh, friend, yeah? So? To, to get on the housing ladder is not a bad idea. Yeah, buy it with someone because it, if you're on 40 grand and they're on 20 grand, that's 50,000 pound, four and a half times that. Yeah, uh, if you've got a girlfriend and she doesn't work, get her out to work because you need that income. <laughs> <laughs> Only joking. <laughs> yeah, but uh, we, we, the money counts these days. Yeah, uh, if you're doing an application, don't chop your application, don't put things in and then think, oh, hang on, cancel that, do another one, do another one, I didn't get it with them, or do it with them. That all gets recorded. So if you're gonna do an application, make sure you do it correctly. If you're filling the figures in, don't make it up. S try, trying to think ahead what the lender wants to hear. Put in your exact figures. For example, if they ask you what your council tax is, look on your bank statement. Look on your bank statement and all your outgoings and put them in correctly. Uh, that's your best way of, of, of get, getting an application through. And it does pay to pay for advice. So don't worry about going and getting advice off a mortgage broker. Get a good mortgage broker, stick with them, and he'll get you the best deal on the market. That's my 10 things. I didn't number them, by the way, but yeah, there was 10 I, in there. The ten, like I was saying, it's in, uh, in today's situations, like a, uh, I uh, heard all your 10 points, but some of them is really hard to actually saving. We can put a high rate of deposit. It's going to be a, it's going to be a tough for the new buyers or first time buyers. Did you think so? It's going to be a hard ladder for the first time buyers. Yeah, well, it's going to get bad because house prices are going to come down. And especially at the same time, <coughs> I mean, like if all the prices, inflations are so high up, it's like for people like a... I was, talking to hard to, I was talking to a young fella yesterday right, yeah. in, the, in the gym. And this young chap says to me, uh, well, look at my wages. I'm never going to be able to afford a house on my wages. Mm -hmm. And my, my advice to him was, you're absolutely right on your wages. Change jobs, get a better income. Because you will not be able to afford a house of £300,000 if you're only earning £10 an hour. Sometimes, sometimes, if you want that house, you've got to go out and earn more income. And it's not a bad ad ad advice anyway. You know what I mean? If, if, if you're not earning enough money, look for a different job. And Ken, did you, notice, uh, did you notice that like, uh, interest rate is going higher, mm -hmm. we keep coming on the inflation rates higher, but the pay of the people, the income of the people, it's not uh, the that's every what institution that's and what happens with runaway inflation. going on strikes. So. I'm sorry, but that, that's what happens with runaway inflation. As inflation goes up, the goods in the shops go up, yeah. the fuel goes up, and your income isn't keeping in track with that. So it erodes the money that's in your pocket. That's why the government, uh, their huge task, and their only task, is to get inflation down. Inf if inflation is low, it means they can improve the wealth of the whole country. And, and uh, I hate to say it, I think the government's made some serious mistakes over the, over the last years, but who am I to say what the government should be doing? They've got a, they've got a tough job there. Uh, maybe it's time for a change of government, like you were saying earlier. Is that uh, only other countries like the UK's political uh, decisions affect our economy or is a worldwide effect? It's a world, world effect, I hate to say. Uh, all countries are, are suffering from uh, inflation uh, rises at the moment. America is definitely having a problem. We have uh, some historical uh, effect in our country like a Brexit and the COVID yep. and... Uh, 
Brexit, COVID, uh, Ukraine, Ukraine uh, oil, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's all affecting us. And, and there are external effects to the country, but what, at least what the country is doing is they're trying to tackle it. And, and I think, I think the, is it a good job they're doing? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, what is the answer? Who knows? I mean, uh, Japan seemed to, to have something sorted out. Their, their inflation's at 2% right now, which... Uh, the same time, you know, when I was listening, the, uh, the Bank of England's governor in there, the inflation's like it's a controllable, it's, it's control, like in controllable yeah. in England, yeah? And what is, if they're saying the inflation's a control now, why they raise the interest rate now if they're saying that's not that bad to you in, uh, in GK? But it is bad. You know, I mean, I mean, the thing is, we're, 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 we're a rich country. They want to stay to be, they want to stay being a rich country. Yeah? They don't want it just to run away with themselves. I mean, I mean, the thing is, China, China apparently have got a huge uh, interest rate um, inflation problem. They've got a huge inflation problem in China. Uh, but, I mean, we're now on to world politics, and <laughs> it's not really my subject. <laughs> So, because like uh, uh, we all dis uh, discussed everything uh, approximately, and yep. uh, still one question here for me. Uh, you know, when people's buying a uh, mortgage, there's one option, uh, rent only. Yeah? There's an option. Uh, oh, you can rent rather than just go for yeah. the mortgage. Yeah? No, sorry. Uh, interest rate only. Um, my Still apology what? for that. Uh, interest only options. Did you think so? Interest only options are. Oh, interest only. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. The good options for people. Right. Uh, I don't think interest only is a great idea. Yeah. I, I, but saying that, look, if I'm in a house and I'm keeping a roof over my family's head, you do what you need to do. So, for example, if I had someone come to me right now, and f in fact, I had someone last month, they came to me, uh, they, were, they, they were on a really high paid salary, uh, except the salary was coming to an end, and they were seriously worried about their mortgage. They were paying £2,800 a month for the mortgage. Yeah. And they didn't know how they were going to be able to keep it if the highest earner in the house wasn't going to be able to work. So they, we, we changed them onto an interest-only mortgage. Now, an interest-only mortgage is a short-term fix. The problem is, when you go on an, uh, onto an interest-only mortgage, at some point you've got to get off it and get the mortgage paid. Or you're going to end up selling your house and have to, uh, uh, having to downsize at some point. Uh, but sometimes it, it can be a solution to the problem, the immediate problem. So you can, you, you can solve that problem over the long term. If someone was coming to me and they certainly couldn't, uh, and say they were right on the edge of, of uh, right on the edge of the budget, and all of a sudden, the mortgage was getting increased by £500 or £600 a month. And they just could not make them payments. I would consider uh, interest only. Or, or you can do uh, a mortgage that's called interest, part interest, part repayment. So at least you're repaying something. Yeah? And, and again, this is where you need to talk to a mortgage broker. Mm. Yeah? It's not something you would want to attempt by yourself. So it's like a, a, if they're paying interest only, they can save for a while, but it, sometimes it's become a habit to just pay the interest uh, and uh, it's a hard to go back to. It can be a bit of a kick the can down the street and, and, and uh, sort the problem in five years, ten years, and then you've got other problems. I mean, I, mean, I have a, one, of, one of the stories I, I, I could tell was the, the chap who came to me at 68 years old, he had just had a heart attack. He was a builder, he had hardly any equity in his house. And he said to me, Ken, what can you do for me? I'm not working, uh, I've got hardly any equity in my house, I'm not, I've been on interest only for the last 20 years, I haven't paid any of it, and I've got no repayment plan in place. And all I could say to that chap is, we're gonna to have to start looking for another house. Hmm. Yeah, because if you don't pay your mortgage, if you're not paying, paying that mortgage off, at some point the bank is gonna want the money back. Yeah, you've got to be realistic about these things. You can't just hide your head in the sand. You need to pay the mortgage off if you're going to have the house, or at some point you're going to be moving out of the house. That's a term called capital and interest. Yeah, capital and interest, a repayment. repayment. Capital and interest, yeah. Uh, and that's how all mortgages are set up these days. Well, most mortgages are set up. 
In the good old days, we used to have uh, an interest only and we'd have a, a saving plan running alongside it. But unfortunately, when they came to the end of them, saving plan wasn't enough and there was a huge difference. But the whole thing is, these days, people, people don't do them. Endowment plans, they were called. Yep. As a financial consultant, as a mortgage consultant, Ken, what did you think? What could be the impact on, in coming days in the future on people's lives in GK? It's going to be tough. We're all going to be, uh, like I said before, we're going to be uh, tightening our belts. Yeah? Uh, it's a great time to be saving and looking around to, to invest. Uh, there, there will be some gains here. Uh, but uh, I, guess, I guess we, we, we need to look at things that we're just taking for granted before. Yeah? I mean, if you need to find an, an additional £300, where are you going to find that £300 from? It may mean a few extra hours of work. It may mean turning the electricity off or the gas off or, or, or uh, budgeting properly. Some, a lot of people out there have never budgeted. Maybe it's time to start. Maybe get into the habit of budgeting. Yeah, uh, but unfortunately, with interest rates going up, your mortgage is going to go up. It looks like the gas is going up, the oil is going up, the food's going up. I mean, we, we, we've just got to ride with it and just saying, I need to be paid more. Well, everybody's going to be shouting the same thing, but all that does is makes makes every, the the inflation go up even further. Is so, any is any help or support coming from the UK government to the peoples? I don't know where they're getting the money from. And, uh, yeah, and <laughs> I don't think that, there's anything left. because yeah, our Home Secretary, which is stuck on the Albanian crisis on borders. We've got the, the Albanian crisis. We've got the Ukrainian crisis. We've got uh, what's happening in the uh, Korea crisis. There's a lot of crises out there. I mean, listen, if you look at the news every day, I mean, honestly, is it all you've got to worry about is how much goes out of your bank account and how much just comes in. Budget properly and you can make the best out of it. And that's all we can do. Thank you so much, Ken. Thank you so much for being a, uh, taking a part in, my, uh, part in my show, being a guest in my show. Thank you so much. And you give a, won a wonderful and uh, valuable information to my viewers today. And because uh, I know people are stuck in their situation, especially when it's the fine lines related situations at home, it can impact people's life, family life. It, it can cause so many issues. This, this is the main actual issue when people, uh, people suffering from the <coughs> domestic violence yeah. and stuff like that because there is, if there's no money in the house there's a fight actually all the time you can see in it's, it's simple and very um, very effective impact on people's life lack of I, money I, I in always, the families yeah. and uh, thus we can see this is very it's, it is people's are panic and uh, it's like a very justified to be uh, them to be a panic at the moment because it can impact uh, and affect their life. Thank you so much, Ken, to being a uh, guest in my show. Hey, thank you very thank much you. for having me. I really and, appreciate it. Uh, thank you, my viewers, to watching us today. And it was a little change today in my program. Let's see how to see the dabs on the card. There was your name. Please let me know in my uh, comment box. Thank you so much. And why could you go Khalsa? Why could you give Fateh? And see you next Friday.